Hello and welcome back to the Barcelona career mode here on FC24. I hope you guys are ready to get into episode number seven of this Barcelona career mode here in season six, technically. If you are just now watching this for the first time, we did five seasons at Brighton Hove Albion and now made our switch to Barcelona for this season. As you can see, 20 games into the year, things are going pretty well. Sitting in first place in La Liga, and we are also into the round of 16 in the Champions League. We will be facing Liverpool once we get to that game, but I don't think we're going to get to it in this episode. But just so you can see, and then you can see down there as well, our former team, Brighton, playing Inter Milan in the round of 16 as well. So happy to see things are going well for them. Here in this episode, we will be playing Osasuna, and then we have a, uh, a cup game against a second division side. And then we have a game against Villarreal as well. And we will be then through the January transfer window, and we have a couple of moves to make. If you didn't catch the last episode, please be sure to go check that one out and hit the like button on that one, as well as hitting the like on this one and hitting subscribe if you haven't already. But we tried to sell Graven Birch, and we're trying to send him to a team where we can get Pedri or Gavi in return, and we can send them a little bit of money. Didn't work. Uh, we pretty much couldn't do it, so the only way it's going to be possible to get either Pedri or Gavi is to sell Graven Birch, and then to use those funds to buy him, uh, to buy one of those players, but I just don't know if it's going to be possible. So as of right now, it's looking like it's not. We're going to be making some moves you know, outside of those two players to try to find someone else to maybe bring in a midfield Unfortunately, we do have an objective that we're still trying to complete, which is to sign three crucial players and make a profit of 200 million. We've already done that twice with players, but for whatever reason, we didn't sign a third crucial player, even though we've signed several players so far this year already in the summer transfer window. But I want to make sure we complete the objectives just because all the other objectives besides continental and domestic success, just because they want us to win a treble. And obviously, that's not always the easiest thing to do. It's not always guaranteed, especially uh, in this career mode. So... It's going to be difficult to complete those objectives, so I want to make sure we complete the other ones. I just don't know, you know, with the, who we're going to bring in, I just don't know if we're going to be able to sign someone that's a crucial first-team player unless we move on from someone in the team already, if that makes sense. So Graven Birch is the most likely scenario, but I still don't even necessarily want to give him up. So it's, it's going to be tough. Uh, a player that we want to bring in is Onana. I'm definitely willing to bring him in in, in that defensive midfield role, but with Graven Birch potentially leaving i don't know if onana's you know the future i don't know if he's the crucial first team player that we can bring in so we're going to try to bring him in as a backup at some point later on in the episode probably i also added moises caicedo and romeo lavia as well but i just again with them i don't know if they're you know the player for the future if they're going to be as good as we want them to be we've got enzo fernandez down here he could be a viable option i just don't know if i want to bring him in we've got fagioli down here as well Pedri, of course, we try to go after. I added Bellingham, but I don't really necessarily want to bring in Bellingham, even though he wouldn't necessarily cost, you know, too much. Preferably, I would want to bring in Gavi, but as you can see, it's just not going well. We've been rejected like two or three times now for, for moves for him, so I don't think it's going to be possible. And then, you know, in most other positions, I think we're good. The only position that we could really try to replace would be Ter Stegen in goal, since he is 36 years old now, but... He's been playing fine, and I don't really necessarily think we need to move on from him. And besides that, I'm loving this team. A lot of the, what we, do, you know, we see Chamarand up top. A lot of what we do is play Colin Mawani up top in his normal position, and then play Luis Enrique out on that right side. And our team is pretty good. I mean, there's really nowhere that I feel like we necessarily need to improve defense. I think we are doing fine. We brought in Mendez, Lukeba, and Hakimi in the summer transfer window, and all three of them have been performing very well for us. So I don't think we need to replace any of them. We could try to find a replacement for Luis Enrique on the right side, but I like Enrique. I like playing Colo Mwani out there and playing Chamarain up top. I like kind of the balance we have there. So, yeah, it's it's tough. In the last episode, we brought in Nathan Collins as a backup right-footed center back because we got rid of Rafael Varane, who was 35 or 36 years old. We're trying to get rid of Lewandowski. He is now 40 years old. We're trying to get rid of Gundogan because he is 38 years old, and we're just never going to use him. He's 68 overall. And I think we've added. Uh, Swellar, I'm not sure how you would say that. I added uh, to the transfer list, added Faye to the loan list, added Casado to the transfer list, added Trilly to the transfer list, I believe, as well. We're looking to clean up the club. Uh, added Furman Lopez to the loan list. The rest of the season, I don't think we're going to have too many games to necessarily worry about getting in these lower level players. And yeah, that's kind of where we're at right now to give you a full rundown. I think first things first, we will advance a couple of days to this Osasuna game. And we will see if we can get offers in. We have Inter Milan coming in for Gravenberch. I'm going to go negotiate this one and see 
what we can get. And we offered 111 million and they straight up rejected it and said that that was way too much money, even though they were offering us 101 million for them. So it's just been, it's been a struggle transfer business in this January transfer window. But we are now to match day against Osasuna. So we will go ahead and get into this game before we do anything else. Of course, our former player at Brighton, Andy Dioff, in this Osasuna team. So we're probably going to concede some goals to him yet again. But then we're going to go with our best lineup, besides Luis Enrique, of course. And we'll get into this one and try to get a win. Gabriel Viega with a nice pass out here to Ansu Fati. Looking for a cross inside. Not a bad cross, but just no one there. And then another great defensive effort by them. Dwight McNeil sending Tomas on a run down here. Probably going to look for a cross if at some point. But passes it back inside to McNeil. Inside to Andy Dioff, who thankfully misses. But it looks like we gave up a penalty. Nuno Mendez going in for the tackle. And was he a bit late? I mean, come on. That does not look like much at all. And it looks like Andy Dioff will be stepping up for the penalty. And he goes right and we go left. And that's a 1-0 deficit after 20 minutes to Osasuna. Umawani inside to Gabri Viega. Out here to Chao Miranda who has loads of pace. Looking for a cross towards the back post. And Ansu Fati with the finish. I did not actually expect that to work. But it does. And 10 minutes later we level this game at 1. Gabri Viega has an option out here to Nuno Mendez. He's going to potentially look for a cross, and wow, Diego M. I'm not sure who he is over there. The an excellent tackle. Hakimi with a nice tackle. Gabri Viega absolutely taken out in midfield after that tackle. Let's see what the referee gives. I'm assuming probably a yellow, but potentially a red. Yep, looks like it'll be a yellow. We'll have a free kick in a fairly dangerous area here. I don't really want to try to go for goal like at all. I kind of just want to chip this up very lightly towards the middle of the box. See if we can't find someone. Araujo sends it to Smith Rowe and he's clearly offsides. You know, Mendez pushing forward, finding a pass to Gabri Viega. Their defense is so far back. And Kolomawani going for the shot, but well wide of the post. Hakimi looking for an option, finds Chao Miranda. Ansu Fati, we're going to turn that one back around. Go for a shot. Keeper makes the save. 62 minutes gone now. We will have a corner. Looking for, hopefully, maybe a Raujo in the middle of the box. We don't find him, but we find Gravenberch, who nearly finds a goal. But that one is going to be intercepted by the defense. Gravenberch gets it back. Finds a pass to Kolomawani. Oh. Wide yet again. 70 minutes gone here. A corner for Osasuna. Swinging it in is Danny Ceballos. Gabri Viega gets to that one. We get a pass out here to Luis Enrique, but he is tackled by Dwight McNeil, who sends it back to the box. And luckily, no one is there for them. Gavin Birch inside. We do have a pass here to Tom Bischoff, who came on for Emil Smith Rowe earlier, who finds Ansu Fati. Going to look back inside for Chow and look for a shot that is deflected away. Gavin Birch sort of gets onto it, who finds Gabri Viega. Another pass over here to Bischoff. Viega with a pass. Looked like through some legs. Oh, and nearly finding a pass through as well. Gravenberch sending this one out wide to Hakimi. Hakimi going for a cross. No one there, and it will bounce off the defender out. 84 minutes gone. We really need a goal, you know, now almost. Luis Enrique gets fouled on the edge of the box. Gravenberch with it. Nuno Mendez. And Sufati trying to lay it back off to him, but now they could be on the counter. And they slow the play down. 90 minutes gone. Let's see how much added time the referee gives. If he gives any. Tomas looking like he's trying to make a move. Is he going to be able to get around Araujo? Araujo with great defense. Puado ends up with it. I believe the referee will blow his whistle here, and he will. A stressful end to that game. We're lucky to get away with a point, but... Unlucky that we don't get three as well because I think we really outplayed them when it comes to the end of the game We had a lot more possession in the second half a lot more shots, but unfortunately just can't find a goal for our win so one point up next a Potentially hopefully easier game against Burgos a second division side obviously in the last uh, round We also played a second division side and beat them 
3-0. It was Laganes, I believe is maybe how you say it. And in the round of 16, we will be facing Burgos. Probably the easiest side we could have faced out of all 16 teams that are still remaining. So lucky to have us uh, playing a side like this yet again. We're going to advance these few days, see if some offers come in for some players. We do have a loan offer here from Almeria for uh, Faye, which we are going to delegate. We'll give him out on loan. Don't really want to send him out on a loan option to buy. It doesn't even really matter at this point, but, you know, that's just what we're going to do for now. And, yeah, still no offers coming through. Casado's deal running out with us. I'll let him go on a pre-contract if he wants to. And then Crystal Palace coming in for Faye as well. Just not really offers I'm really, you know, too worried about. And now we've got a release clause that has been met for $9.8 million for Swalar. I believe is how you say his name. Not too worried about him as a player. He's like our third option or fourth option, right, winger. So, you know, not too worried about him leaving. He can leave if he would like to. $10 million in the budget is not bad either. This will be Burgos' lineup for this cup fixture against them. Not going to be familiar with any of these players, and we're going to be playing a very heavily rotated lineup as well. Um, Luis Enrique, the only you know super high-rated player in the team, I guess, besides Ter Stegen. Nathan Collins is going to be getting his debut for FC Barcelona here in this game, so that's exciting for him. And uh, yeah, we'll probably show minimal highlights from this game, just kind of like what we do in these cup games. I'm not necessarily worried about winning the cup, but obviously I'm going to try my best to. So yeah, we'll show a few highlights from this game, and hopefully all of them will be goals for us and not for them. Lewandowski inside to Furman Lopez, and that's just a bit too easy. Second division side, Burgos. I believe I, I looked at it before. I believe they were sitting down in 18th in the second division. So, I mean, good on them to, for making it to the round of 16, but I don't think they're going to be much of a matchup for us. Bischoff, another pass to Furman Lopez. Almost another finish. Oh, what a pass. Ter Stegen with the save. Burgos... Not playing around here in this first half. Playing very nicely. Getting some nice passes in around. And yet another one as well. And they level this game at 1 after 35 minutes. Lewandowski laying it back off to Luis Enrique. Who's just got more pace. But does not have the finish. Well, I must say after 80 minutes. We still have not been able to find a second goal. And it looks like they are the most likely team to right now. But Nathan Collins with great defense. We need to go find a winner real quick. We do not want to have to play a replay if that is an option. I'm not sure if it is in Spain, but we, if it is, we don't want it. Bringing on a five-man sub here after 86 minutes. Getting some big guns back into the team to find a second goal. We're going to have a lot of pace up front. Ansu Fati, Kolomowani, and Lombardi coming in. We need to win this header. We do. Berman Lopez finds Lombardi. Uh, Kolomowani with not very many options. But we'll go for a shot. Not a bad effort. Batishile gets it away. Furman Lopez, our first goal scorer. Trying to find a lane through, but just nothing doing just yet. Gun to one. Inside to Gravenbirch. Trilly with a cross, but the keeper will collect. And a 1-1 draw here against 2nd Division Burgos. Means that we could be going to a replay. Actually, it looks like they play extra time here. So no replays in Spain and cup competitions. That's nice to see. So winner takes all here. Trilly inside to Ansu Fati. Who is trying to find a lane through. Making some nice moves. Keeping the dribble close. Passes it to Lombardi. Who scores but is offside. Down to one. Over here to Furman Lopez. Who will find Lombardi back to Furman Lopez, who will take the shot and who will score the second goal and his second goal of the game, which gives us a 2-1 lead here after 110 minutes. Not exactly what we wanted from this game, but we'll take it and we'll get an interception here as well. Raven Birch with a nice touch and a shot away. Only a few minutes left in this game. Hopefully, we've got it locked down. Probably should have taken that one short, but Kolomowani just... Doesn't go for a header. That's great. Ito to Collins. The big man with a shot. And well wide of the post. But then he will head this goal kick away. And that will be the last kick of the game. A scary one. But eventually a win. And through to the round of eight. So I guess the quarterfinals here in the Spanish Cup. And right after that game. Chelsea coming in with an offer of 101 million. 
for Ryan Gravenberch. So he could be leaving the club. And I don't know if I really want that or not, but we're going to let the deal go through and see if it, you know, actually develops and actually ends up going through. And he will be moving on to Chelsea. And it looks like it is going to go through here. 101 million to Chelsea. Ryan Gravenberch. Is that going to make way for, you know, us to bring in Gavi or Pedri? We're going to find out here very soon. We've got a little under 200 million in the budget to work with, and I believe that would be enough for us to get either one of those players pretty much. Do I want to? I don't necessarily know anymore. I mean, Gavi is obviously going to be a very, very good player for us if we bring him in. But is he worth 170 million that Juventus are going to be asking for? I just don't think so. I mean, we could very easily go and get another Juventus player here and Jude Bellingham for... 50 million less apparently and, and he's a higher overall and just overall better player I, yeah i just don't know if it would make sense for us to go after gavi but i'm not going to go after jude just because you know real madrid barcelona it, i don't think it would make a lot of sense for him to come join barcelona at this point in his career but a player that i am intrigued in bringing in would be bruno he is of course 31 years old now but he's also not going to cost a lot of money between 50 to 60 million maybe so that would leave a lot of uh, a lot of money left over for us to bring in Onana for you know around forty as well, and then I think I want to bring in a fullback by the name of Takahiro Tamiyasu as well, just to give us some cover in a left back right back position since he can play both sides. So he's only going to cost about thirty million. So I think that's what the plan is, and that's what I'm going to go do now. We're going to go for Bruno Gimaraes first and offer up fifty five million and see if he will uh, if Newcastle will or not Newcastle Juventus will accept that. They want Tamir Saleh. Of course they do. Everybody would want him. We're going to remove that and just go back in with 55. We'll say 56 and see what they say. And they're okay with 56. So we are going to be bringing him in for just over 55 million, which is a much better deal than the 170 million we would have to spend on Gavi. We're going to give him a crucial role to satisfy that objective to make sure that we complete it and make sure we make the board happy just in case, you know, we don't win at all this year. And we'll settle on 125000 a week. So Bruno Guimaraes, welcome to FC Barcelona. You will not be the last player that we will be going after in this January transfer window. But we will go ahead and get into this next game first before we go after those players. A game here against Villarreal. First place just by a point over us in the league. So a very, very big game. And of course, we're only two points ahead of Celta Vigo now in third place. So... This game is going to be very big. Since we just bought, brought Bruno in, we're not going to start him immediately. But we will start him uh, on the bench for this game. We'll get Mbamba in, in, that er, in that spot and then go with the best lineup we can put out besides that. So I'm hoping to see Chow Miranda bag a goal or two in this game. He has been lackluster, to say the least, over the last few games. Corner here early on for Villarreal. We're going to head away with Viega. They're going to get that one out to Crawl who finds a pass back to Rodri. We've got so many men in the box right now, so we should be able to defend this. Ansu Fati going in for a tackle, but then turns it right back over. And Afina is going to get a shot away. And nine minutes gone. We are going to concede a goal and go down 1-0. Malamawani. Oh, easy pass. Through to Smith Rowe. But the shot is deflected. Great defense there by Villarreal. Polomawani still ends up with it. Ansu Fati still ends up with that. Chamaranda, shot away. Not a great effort, but Chamaranda is now uh, complaining in the way of the possession, but it was a handball, I believe. Chamaranda with an easy pass here to Smith Rowe. Ooh, Smith Rowe with an excellent shot. I thought for sure that that was going to get blocked. But luckily it doesn't. And I mean, from outside the box as well, that is quite the angle. And yeah, I mean, the defender's literally, I mean, covering the entire goal almost. And somehow Smithrow finds a way to get that one around him and around the keeper as well. 1-1. Smithrow pushing forward. We have a pass to Ansu Fati. He has to control it first. The defender is all over him. And we get dispossessed. Smithrow with a pass through to Chamaranda. If he can control it, we can get a pass to Mawani in time for him to get away, but unfortunately we can't. Hakimi, we're going to look over the top for Chamaranda, but it gets blocked away. And the referee will blow his whistle for half time, so still 1-1 at half here against Villarreal. What a ball over the top. Rodri with it, passes inside to Afina, 
who will go for the shot and does not miss by much. Chris Sagan doesn't have to make the save, but the post almost had to for us. Smith Rowe to Hakimi. Hakimi back to Smith Rowe. I see an option inside of Gabri Viega. Insu Fati with a shot. Kind of just toe poked it out there. And it will get cleared out. Oh, Kola Mwani with an effort of dreams. A right footed finesse shot from the right side. Not sure exactly how that worked. We're going to have to look at the replay again. I didn't even expect it to really even be, you know, a great shot at all. Zero expected goals. And kind of just curves it to that back left side. Should the keeper have done better? Probably. Would he have expected that shot right then? Probably not. Oh, Nuno Mendez with a terrible pass. The Andrea inside. Rodri now with it. Araujo trying to get a tackle in. And Araujo is not to be messed with in his own box. Smith throw. We find a pass through to Chow, who has pace. But can he get through this last defender? Oh, my goodness. Chow Miranda. Take a bow. What a finish that is to give us a two-goal lead here after 70 minutes. Yeah, right about here, I was thinking, no shot, we scored this. But then I was also thinking, well, we don't have anybody to pass it to either. So, a fantastic finish. Keeper, again, maybe should have done better. Not sure what that animation is, but... And now, 82 minutes gone here. We're going to go ahead and get a few different subs in. Bruno Guimaraes making his debut for Barcelona here in the 82nd minute. They do have a free kick here off of a handball. And I imagine it's going to be quite the shot. We'll have to see just how it is and... Not quite on target. Bruno with his first pass down here to Gabri Viega. Nuno Mendez pushing forward. Back post. Colo Mwani, not Colo Mwani, Luis Enrique with the finish. I forgot that we just subbed Luis Enrique in for Mwani. And a volley to finish it off. 4 1 here against Villarreal. And three points firmly in the bag. And first place in La Liga firmly in the bag. Villarreal fighting to get one back here at the end of the game. A shot is taken right at one of our defenders. And the referee will blow his whistle. We're well past the extra time. And that's three points in the bag, like I said. Fantastic game from the boys. Not exactly dominant, but a win nonetheless. Way outscored our expected goals. Now we've had some games rescheduled. We actually have a cup game against Atletico Madrid now on the first before the Real Madrid game. So I think what we're going to do is just finish off this episode with the January transfer window. We got a couple more moves to make with Tamiyasu and with Onana, hopefully, to bring in. Hopefully we don't run into any issues there. But yeah, in the next episode, we will have Atletico Madrid in the Cup, Real Madrid in the League, Almeria in the League, and then Liverpool as well in the Champions League in the first leg of that fixture. And then probably, you know, if we win against Atletico Madrid, maybe another Cup game as well at some point. So... We'll just have to see how it goes. But yeah, that's the plan as of right now. We're going to go ahead and simulate here to deadline day and try to get these deals across. First deal coming up is going to be Amadou Onana. Currently playing for Lorient in the French League, but we should be able to get him for 38 to 48 million, somewhere in there. We're going to go straight in with an offer of 36 million and see what they say to that. They want 47 and a 5% sell-on clause. I'm okay with the sell-on clause, but we definitely got to bring that transfer fee down. Not that we need the money, but you can always save, and that's always a good thing. We'll send them $42 million, and it looks like they will be happy with that, so we'll get this deal over the line. And now that we've got him into the team, I mean, if we, once we add Tommy Asu, I mean, I think this team's going to be pretty complete. And Bamba, we're going to send down to the bench for Gumaresh, and then we'll send Onana up to the bench for Furman Lopez. Furman Lopez, I know, is kind of a fan favorite, but unfortunately, we just don't need him. We might keep him in instead of Mbamba also. We never know. Yeah, Fernando Lopez has been playing pretty well for us in those cup games, so we might keep him in. But yeah, I think I want to add Tamiyasu, and then the bench will look pretty much like this, except replace Mbombo for Tamiyasu. And we will be done with our transfer business, and then that team would be absolutely incredible. So let's go ahead and advance an hour or two and see if there's any big moves being made. It looks like Trent is moving on from Liverpool finally after several years. And moving on to PSG in this league, or in this career mode. Leicester City coming in for Swellar. Let's see if that deal gets done. But yeah, Trent, been at Liverpool his entire career and now 30 years old, is finally wanting to move on to PSG. $110 million for Trent Alexander-Arnold. 
Casado has agreed a deal with Middlesbrough to move to them on a free transfer. Could have made, you know, a few million from him, but he wasn't that great. Villarreal want Trilly on a loan to buy. I would give them to... Actually, I'm okay with giving him to Villarreal, honestly. If they want to take him on loan. Once we bring in Tommy Asu, we won't need Trilly. Going to advance one more hour here, and then we were going to go in for Tommy Asu. I don't believe any other teams have been going after him. We get, haven't gotten notified of it. He is at Fiorentina, and I believe he's been there for quite a while in this career mode, but... He's a player, obviously, I admire being an Arsenal fan in real life, but I think in this game, he's also very solid as a backup player. And we'll go straight in with an offer of 25 million for him. And they're okay with that. Perfectly fine with it. Obviously, he's going to be a rotational player for us, and at 30 years old, I don't think he would mind being, you know, an FC Barcelona backup player at all, especially with the fact that he could potentially win a Champions League here this season. So Takahiro Tamiyasu will be an FC Barcelona player for just 25 million. An 83 overall backup for 25 million I think is an absolute steal. We're gonna go ahead and move him to the bench for Mbamba, switch around the team a little bit. Wish we could have got some other players off the books. Gundawan, Lewandowski, wish they could have moved on. Not too big of a deal that they haven't. Uh, hoping to maybe make some loan moves for some other players, but Besides that, I mean, this team is absolutely incredible. The the starters, the bench, I think this team is absolutely figured out. Going to make sure that Onana and Tamiyasu have uh, training plans for them on performance focus so that their sharpness will go up. And then that's going to be that for us. We're going to advance these seven hours for the rest of the tran transfer deadline day and see if anything goes through. That is not good news. That's exactly what we don't want. Gabri Viega, 213 million pound or euro release clause met. So we're going to go ahead and go make sure that his contract gets renewed somehow. We will delegate this renewal real quick for 275. He's going to take a pay cut. So he wants a one year extension, 280,000 a week, and no release clause. We are perfectly happy with that. Okay. Now that that's out of the way, I mean, 213 million would have been incredible to get into the budget, obviously, but I just don't know if we would have had enough time to actually make it worthwhile. But we'll continue to move forward here. Chavi Simons, looks like he could be moving to Valencia. That will be interesting. Palacios to Bilbao, Diallo away from Cadiz. Some big moves being made. And Cadiz does sell Ahmad Diallo for 63 million, but it doesn't look like there's too much time left for most teams to make moves. Osasuna might be getting rid of Hugo Bueno as well. Only two hours left, and those deals do go through. Xavi Simons from PSG to Valencia for $143 million. I don't think Simons will ever end up at Valencia in his career, at least not this early on in it. But one hour left in the deadline day. We will go ahead and sim past this. Skip past that for now. This is going to be the end of the episode. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the player stats in uh, La Liga here. Not the red cards, but... Top scorers, only level of 13 with, between Chao Miranda, Jimenez, and Bozok over there at Oviedo. So nobody's taken the lead by far. 13 is not a whole lot through 22 games in La Liga, you know, especially considering Ronaldo and Messi played here for a long time. But yeah, Chao Miranda leading the league or at least tied for the league lead. Mwani with seven as well down there. Ensu Fati with seven as well. Nice to see. As far as assists goes, I honestly thought Smith Rowe would be higher, but he hasn't really performed quite as well for us this season as he has whenever we were at Brighton. Only four for him so far, as well as Chao Miranda with five, Ensu Fati with five. And I think those are our only players on the assist list. So that is pretty crazy as well. Ter Stegen in third and clean sheets with five through 22. Need to see some more from him there. And then yellow cards and red cards as well. We don't care too much about. So. That's where we're at with the team. Kind of crazy career mode so far and crazy season so far with FC Barcelona. But we're going to leave that episode here. I'll leave you guys on the squad stat screen so you can see that for every player that we have. But I want to thank you guys for watching. Please be sure to like the video. Please be sure to hit that subscribe button as well. This episode should have been a little bit shorter, kind of like the last one. Uh, let me know if you guys like the shorter episodes or if you like the longer ones. I'm trying to do maybe a little bit shorter episodes so I can release them daily uh, or at least close to daily. With a longer episode, it kind of takes me a little bit longer and, you know, maybe a few days in between. So I'm going to try to be more consistent with uploads and try to be, you know, a little bit quicker with the uploads as well. So that means the episodes might have to be just a little bit shorter. 
But yeah, let me go, let me know what you guys think about that. And I hope you guys are having a great week, great weekend, wherever you're, whatever time you're watching this. And yeah, I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.